Hello friends. In this video, we will study the mode instruction format of A251 programmable communication interface, which is sometimes also known as universal synchronous asynchronous receiver transmitter or USART. So let us start with our topic. <music> programmable communication interface is used by the microprocessors when it is communicating with some peripheral device. When the microprocessor it sends the data to the peripheral device, it sends in the form of a serial data. But microprocessor it deals with the parallel data. So it has to convert the parallel data into a serial data to perform the transfer of data. Okay. So like this is the microprocessor and it is the peripheral device. So this microprocessor it is sending the data also and it is receiving the data also. And this microprocessor it is dealing with the parallel data means inside all the data will be in the parallel form and peripheral it also work with the parallel data but when the transfer of data is taking place then it is done in the form of serial data so when microprocessor is sending the data to a peripheral device it has to convert it into parallel to the serial form Again, peripheral, peripheral device, it has to convert the serial data to the parallel form. Now, when the microprocessor, it is receiving the data, it has to convert the serial data into the parallel form. So, both serial and parallel conversion and parallel to serial conversion has to be performed by the microprocessor. Now, instead of doing this work, microprocessor, it uses a communication interface, which is the 8251. To perform this parallel to serial conversion and serial to parallel conversion. So what this microprocessor does, it give command to the 8251 that which operation is to be performed by the communication interface and according to that uh, operation or that command, the 8251, it will determine its functions. So the microprocessor, it writes the control word or give commands to the 8251. So these control words are written into the control register of the 8251 and according to that control word 8251 will be programmed or it will determine its functions. So the control words of 8251 they are of two types. One is the mode instruction and second is the command instruction. So these two control words are written by the microprocessor into the control register of 8251 to determine its functions. Now here we are studying the mode instruction format of the 8251. So we will study this control word only. Now this mode instruction it is used for setting the functions of the 8251. Now when the 8251 programmable communication interface it is reset then uh, reset means that the, it is coming to its initial conditions. So when it is reset then the mode instruction will be in the wait to write situation. Means whatever instruction or whatever control word is written in the control register after the resetting, it will be treated as the mode instruction. Okay. So whenever it is reset, the control word which is written in the 8251 control register, that will be the mode instruction.
okay so we can say that the mode instruction will be in wait for write means whatever control word is written that will after resetting it will be recognized as the mode instruction now what are the items which are set due, uh, due to this mode instruction means 8251 either it is working in uh, synchronous or asynchronous mode that will be decided by the mode instruction format second the stop bit length in the asynchronous mode in the asynchronous mode whenever the data is transmitted it will have one start bit and two stop bits along with the data so data will be an 8 bit data and one start bit is there and two stop bits are there so total 11 bits are transmitted in the asynchronous mode now what will be the length of the stop bits whether it will be one stop bit or two stop bit that will be decided by the mode instruction format character length parity bit baud rate factor baud rate factor is also determined in the asynchronous mode so this was in the asynchronous mode first third and fourth they are in both synchronous and asynchronous mode next we are also having the internal and the external synchronization in the synchronous mode and the number of sync characters that is also decided by the mode instruction format now let us see the format of this mode instruction in both the synchronous mode and in the asynchronous mode in the asynchronous mode because this mode instruction is written in the control register so it will be an 8 bit format okay so this is the mode instruction format in which first we are studying for the asynchronous mode d7 bit is s2 s1 so all the 8 bits of the control word they will be defined like this now out of this we are having the d0 and d1 bits these decide the baud rate factor how it is deciding like if b2 and b1 it's having the value 0 0 it can have the value 0 1 it can have 1 0 and 1 1 so when the two bits they are 0 0 then sync mode is activated means the 8251 it is going to work in the synchronous mode now when its value is uh, 0 1 okay it means the baud rate is one time of the clock frequency if it is 1 0 then it is 16 times of the clock frequency if it is 1 1 then it is 64 times of the clock frequency so this is how the baud rate factor that uh, the factor will be 1 16 or 64 that will be decided by these two bits next bits are l2 and l1 d2 d3 bits these bits decide the character length means the data which we are transmitting whether it will be what will be the length of it 5 bit 6 bit 7 bit 8 bit data so that will be decided by l2 and l1 now these two bits also can have different values like 00 01 10 and 11 
when it is 0 0 then the length of the character will be 5 bits when it is 0 1 6 bits 7 bits and 8 bits so these two bits d2 and d3 they are deciding the length of the character next we are having pen which is the parity enabled so when this bit is 1 then the parity will be enabled and when this bit is 0 then the parity will be disabled so it is deciding that uh, whether the parity bit will be enabled or disabled next bit is ep which is the even parity generator Now when this bit is 1 then even parity is generated and when this is 0 then odd parity is generated. Okay. Then we are having S2, S1 which are the uh, which are deciding that the number of stop bits. That how many stop bits are to be included along with the data. So these two bits can have different values 0, 0, 0, 1. 1 0 and 1 1 if it is 0 0 then it is invalid if it is 0 1 then 1 bit is introduced if it is 1 0 then one and a half bit and if it is 1 1 then two bits are there which are acting as the stop bits okay so you can see that in the mode instruction format, it is in the asynchronous mode. So in the asynchronous mode, it is deciding the number of stop bits, the even parity generator, parity enable, character length and the baud rate factor. Now in this you have seen that when the D0 and D1 bits they are 0 0 then the mode will be changed. It will be the synchronous mode. Okay. So when we will study the synchronous mode format these two bits will be kept as constant means 0 0 their value will remain the uh, as 0 0 okay so let's study the mode instruction in the synchronous mode now in this mode again we will have the 8 bits and the bit as I have said that D0 and D1 bit they will be kept as constant 0 0 okay. Then we are having D2 and D3 again it will determine the length of the character. Then we are having D4 bit which is again the parity enable. D5 is the even parity generator. And D7 and D6, they are the SCS and the ESD bits. Means for the sync characters, for the detection of sync characters. So PEN, it is for the parity enable. EP, it is for the even parity generation. ESD it is for the external sync detect as we have studied that uh, the a mode instruction it also decides the internal and the external synchronization so in the synchronous mode this D6 bit is deciding it then we are having SCS which is the single character sync means how many sync characters are there now length of the character it can take two values it can take different values like 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 so if it is 0 0 means the length of the character will be 5 bits if it is 0 1 it means the length of the 
character will be 6 bits, 7 bits and 8 bits. Okay. Then we are having the parity enabled. So when this bit is 1, then the parity will be enabled. If this bit is 0, then it will be disabled. Next, we are having the even parity generation. So when this bit is 1, then even parity is generated. When this is 0, then odd parity is generated. Next comes the ESD, which is the external sync detect. So for this, when it is 1, it means that the in the 8251, we are having a pin, which is the sync detect. So this sync detect pin, it is acting as an input and when it is zero then sync detect is acting as an output okay sync character detect for this if its value is one then we are having a single sync character if its value is zero then we are having double sync characters so this is the mode instruction format in the synchronous mode. So you can see that in the synchronous mode, it is deciding the character length, parity enable, even parity generation, and the external and the internal synchronization and the number of the sync characters. So this mode instruction format, uh, mode instruction control word in the A251, it determines the functions of the A251 in the two different modes, synchronous and the asynchronous mode. That how the A251 it is going to work in these two modes. So in this video, we studied about the mode instruction format of the A251 programmable communication interface, which is also known as the USART or the Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.